All right, Mr. Abel James. Fat Burning Man. <laughs> Let's talk about fat. Yes, I'm down. One of my favorite substances. What's your favorite form of fat? If you could only have one kind of fat, what would it be? Wow, that is, that is a tough one. It's a tie between bacon fat and butter, <laughs> I gotta say. So, um, it's so boring, you copied my answer. How did, how did you know that? Like, like the, those are exactly what I was thinking, it's gonna be bacon, or maybe chocolate. Chocolate's pretty good. Chocolate's but, pretty good. But just chocolate fat isn't as good. So why are we talking about fat? Like people listening to this are going, oh, these guys are insane, they don't look like a bunch of lard asses. Yeah. I did though, I weighed 300 pounds. How right. much did you weigh when you were at your fattest? At my fattest, it was probably about 185, maybe plus. But what's interesting is, I, you know, I have pictures of myself at the same weight yeah. as I am now, and it looks completely different. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, you would you would see me just like that dude's kind of fat and chubby. Yeah. Uh, so it's the the makeup of my body when I was eating almost no fat was fat, but now it's muscle. Yeah. And the idea that some fat makes you lose fat and just makes your brain light up, and other fat doesn't, it's it's so important. Mm -hmm. And like. People laugh. I go to the like, whatever the Mexican food place is. I'm like, no guacamole. Like, like, no, really. I mean, like, I want a plate of guacamole. <laughs> like, I'm gonna eat that for my meal. And maybe I'll get a little meat on there too, whatever. But it's primarily the fat. Yeah. And I carry a little vial of upgraded MCT oil around with me. Like, if I'm gonna get sushi, there's no fat in sushi. That's why <laughs> you spend two hundred dollars eating sushi. Yeah. Right. Because there's no. So you dump MCT oil on it, and then you're suddenly full, and you feel good, and your brain likes it. Dude, I'm gonna try that. I got sushi last night and it was delicious, but I was like, <laughs> we had a bunch of hard boiled eggs left over from traveling. So after dinner, I'm just like stuffing hard boiled yeah, get eggs. Get some of that, that nice egg yolk in, because <laughs> yeah. otherwise it's it's hungry. I, I will tell you, fat does something to your flavor receptors. And yeah. it's, this is less like hacking your performance, but just like the quality of a meal that's zero fat, your body knows it's starving. Mm -hmm. So what we do when you have like a zero fat kind of meal is is you add the fat and all of a sudden, the flavor receptors light up, you, you smile, not just like on the surface, but like the inner part of you responsible for making sure you don't starve to death, it also relaxes. Yeah. And that relaxation does something good for your performance. In fact, your meditation even gets better. Yeah, and I think it also does something for how much you need food. I, I actually, it's funny because we do a lot of the same things, but in my backpack, I also have this little, um, actually it was from a sampler pack of ghee you know yeah. those tiny little things with, yeah. the, with the metal tops? And I fill it up with MCTs and just carry it around like basically as an emergency mm -hmm. <laughs> for if I need a little bit of mental boost or I'm a little bit hungry, just uh, take a little bit of that, put it in my coffee or just take a spoonful of it and all of a sudden I'm rocking out. It, it's really funny, like this morning I didn't have time for breakfast, I, I'm traveling on business and whatever. So I had my Bulletproof coffee and I brewed my coffee in my hotel room and I added some butter, but not too much butter because I hadn't gone to the store yet. It was like a tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of MCT oils. And then I was totally in meetings all day long. <laughs> right? And they're like, do you want a sandwich at lunch? I'm like, your sandwich smells like fast food. It's disgusting. Yeah. I didn't say that. But like, <laughs> literally, I didn't want to eat the sandwich because I knew if I ate it, my brain would turn off and I'd get right. food cravings five minutes later and then I'd want to be eating potato chips. And like, it would totally not make me feel the way I feel right now. Yeah. So what did I do? I just sat there and I didn't starve. I didn't get weak. I didn't get cold. I just sat there. And yeah. that's what fat does for the body. It lets you be so resilient. It's incredible. Yeah. A lot of people might not know this, but for my interviews, um, for the Fat Burning Man show, generally I do them back to back to back to back to back. So sometimes I'm doing, you know, like literally eight interviews in a row. And sometimes my assistant doesn't schedule time for me to, to eat or pee or anything else. You have that problem too? <laughs> yeah. like, please, I just needed five minutes. Yeah. And so, um, I love you, Emily. It's, you're awesome. <laughs> but at the same time, I need to pee sometimes. Um, <laughs> but we yeah, need an so, Outlook app for this. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you know, I maybe I even fasted most of the day before because sometimes I'll do two days in a row of mm -hmm. that because if I'm in interview mode, might as well just roll with it. Um, and I find that it's four o'clock and I haven't eaten anything, and I feel awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's brilliant because I never experienced that in my life before I started basically shoving fat down my throat. When you were chubby. Did you have these incredible, like, I have to stop now or I'm going to kill someone moments? <laughs> right? Like, I must go eat? <laughs> yes. So, uh, meetings. I've never liked meetings anyway, but they were absolutely unbearable Yeah. that way. How about when you have a meeting and it's like between 11 and 12, right before lunch, and some jerk puts cookies on the table? And you're, you're like, time. I don't want to eat cookies. And you're like, and you spend the entire meeting going, 
cookie. And you come back. <laughs> and, and like all of your willpower for the day went into that cookie. And at the end of the day, you're gonna eat it anyway. You know you are. You know you are. Uh, or you're gonna end the meeting like, it's 11.45, I could have three chicken breasts right now, no fat. <laughs> I, I used to do that. I was like yeah. a pretty high executive early in my career. And I, I'd just stand up and there's like 10 people in the room with me. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. I'm gonna kill one of you and eat you. I have to go now. And yeah. I just walk out. Like, what a jerk. Yeah. But it's because I could not handle the biology. Right. And now it's like, oh, it's been a whole day I didn't eat. Yeah. I don't care. And you don't really look like a skeletal little waif of a man. <laughs> no. no. Especially considering how little I eat. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, times am I, of day. Times of day. Am I, am I shoving food down my throat? No. When I was, uh, it didn't work out particularly well for me. So I was a consultant for the, the federal government and Fortune 500s for a while. We had some serious meetings and we had to sit there and they were just constantly bringing in anything that you could find in a meeting, pretty much you don't want to eat. The bowls ever. of hard sugar candy, what's up with that? Oh my God. It's, and no wonder people are just like at each other's throats the entire time. They're trying to okay. subsist on these like fudgy brownies, which actually taste really good. <laughs> I'm sure they're full of Crisco oh, and trans bath and who knows. Um, and then all of these little candies and chips and other things that these little sandwiches, they're super cute, but they're going to make you angry. It yes. never worked for me. So check this, back in the day, when Sun Microsystems hadn't been eaten by Oracle, they had a rule, this is going back to like the 90s, where they, wouldn't, they weren't allowed to serve pasta at their employee lunches, like pasta salad, because someone noticed, like pasta makes everyone fall asleep yeah. two hours later, so we're not gonna do that. <laughs> like it's totally not gonna happen. Now, I'm the CEO of a company now, in fact, we're having like our all hands meeting in Hawaii coming up here. So since my team lives all over like multiple countries, I'm like, we're all just gonna meet in one place so we can like see each other eye to eye and all nice. that. So what am I gonna feed them? Is it gonna be chips and Coke? God no, like I'm spending a lot of money to get them all there. I want <laughs> yeah. them to kick ass every single minute and I want them to be focused. So I'm spending an enormous amount on a food budget. Not yeah. that you have to spend a lot of money to eat this way, but there will be bulletproof coffee in the mornings and there will be high quality sushi and there will be grass fed steak dinners because I, I like these people, they're my friends, I yeah. work with them, but also like I, I want them to perform well because we have a mission to yeah. accomplish here. And so if you run a company and you're listening to this or you have influence over what's in your vending machine, like make it high performance because it matters for the bottom line. That's a simple hack for your company. Feed your people well. By the way, do you know any companies that feed their people well? <laughs> I know a few. There, there are a few in Austin that do a pretty good job yeah. pulling in actually healthy foods. I remember back to when my, my first job in strategy consulting, they had a thing called healthy snacks. <laughs> and this pretzels. is this is all the stuff. Yeah, so we had pretzels for sure, but it was mostly the refrigerated stuff in the right. I remember that cabinet still right next to it right next to it that was full of things I hadn't seen since like third grade. Like those uh, gushers, you remember those things? With, with the, uh, <laughs> basically this hard kind of squishy candy, se candy shell, and then on the inside it was like this gel. Oh, I remember those, <laughs> so, it's like eating a bug or something. Right? Yeah, a super sweet bug. They had fruit roll-ups as part of the Healthy mm -hmm. Snacks program. Um, of course those, those probiotic yogurts that are supposed to be absolutely terrific for you even though they're pure sugar mm -hmm. and zero fat. And it's like people were just running after these children's snacks all day and basically not getting any work done. One of the best decisions they ever made was bringing in a high quality coffee machine. Yep. <laughs> and all of a sudden everyone was rocking out and staying at work because the coffee was so good. The first company to do that was SGI, Silicon Graphics. They, in Silicon Valley, they actually built the buildings that are now Google's headquarters. Like this goes back in history. Really? Cool. They were also the first company to put coffee bars everywhere. They had full on commercial quality espresso machines the employees could operate. And they didn't have just one per building. They were all over the place. Yeah. And they brought in the coffee and they did that because they figured out if you feed your employees and do that, to this day, like that tradition has been carried down. And that's why Google and Twitter yeah. and YouTube and Facebook and even Zynga, all of these companies have outrageous food layouts. Like, oh, I'm sorry, that lettuce is a little bit wilted. Yes, it was picked by one-armed monks down the road, but like, like let us massage the lettuce for you. Literally, it's that level. Yeah. And it's really cool. They make mistakes. They put canola in there and, and sure. things like that. But some of them even have grass-fed meat now. Cool. These companies are not stupid. They have yeah. CFOs with sharp spreadsheets and you know evil little pointy ears. <laughs> and so what they're doing is they're saying, this investment in food, has an ROI. Yeah. And the investment in your food has an ROI. So if a big company full of computer hackers is deciding to do this for their own employees, 
I think it makes sense you should do it for yourself and like for your family. And that's what I do for my own six-year-old, my four-year-old. I feed them the very best food that I can find anywhere on the planet. And every dollar I invest in high quality fat is $10 later, I won't be investing in a heart doctor. Yeah, uh, so it came up today. Someone asked, as many people do, well, isn't this, this diet elitist? Isn't it very expensive? Uh, and I'm like, you know what's expensive is being obese over the course of a lifetime. Um, diabetes <laughs> is expensive. Yeah. Uh, cancer is extraordinarily expensive. And, and these are the things that happen when you follow a diet that isn't appropriate for mm -hmm. you. So that the more money you can spend right now, the better in, in yeah. a lot of ways. But it's not just that. Just if you focus on high quality food, then all of a sudden you don't have to even worry about going to the doctor all the time or measuring necessarily these biomarkers that are completely out of control. It's like all of a sudden you're just healthy and existing and you're eating the best food you've ever had in your yeah. entire life. If you take the money you spend on a typical insurance premium in a big city and you buy a catastrophic policy that says, look, if it's under five grand this year, like I'm gonna have to just find a way to cover it. Yeah. And anything above that is insured. Then That's what I have actually. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense because you take the rest of that savings, which would be $1,000 a month, yeah. and you spend it on like the best quality food you can get mm -hmm. and on other things that improve your quality of life, which improve the quality of health. And all of a sudden, then if you break your arm, you get in a car accident or something really bad happens, you know, the West Nile virus lands on your forehead right. or something. <laughs> all right, fine, you're covered. But the rest of the time, you really don't need to go to the doctor all that often yeah. because you're not sick. And right. For me, I was on antibiotics hundreds of times. I had strep throat every month as a child. So tonsils came out, they had chronic sinus infections every month as an adult until I got on top of all this and just decided, look, I fired. The doctor told me vitamin C would kill me. Yeah. And I, I <laughs> I'm not joking, and, and got into you know understanding root causes. Yeah. But that was an awful lot of money. In fact, during college, I was getting really fat. Uh, I had you know, 300 pounds then. I spent a thousand dollars a semester on antibiotics my insurance company wouldn't cover wow. just for sinus infections. Like that was a huge budget item for me. I'm like, yeah. I'll eat worse quality food so I can take more of these little green pills. Like, what kind of that's just broken, <laughs> right? The secret might have been eat more healthy fat, stop yeah. eating gluten, and understand the impact of environmental toxins on the body. Right. It, it wasn't it, in retrospect, it wasn't that hard, but at the time, it's so invisible. Yeah. And there are so many, it's, it's such a mental thing. This is uh, an example I brought up today. I was, um, I don't usually go to the gym, but I was traveling, I was in New Hampshire, and so I, I went and I heard these two guys, they were uh, complaining about the price of supplements and the price of food and you know, high quality food is so expensive and all this stuff. Um, they're just rapping about this stuff for like 20 minutes. And then I see the guy walk out and do his brand new truck with $3,000 rims on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> My lord, this is like such an illustration of the way that we think today. It's like yeah. the amount of money that we spend on food, just because you can get eggs for a dollar at Walmart doesn't make them the same thing as yeah. $8 eggs that come from a farm. And if you have $8 eggs, you get a dozen of them. And if you can make a meal out of two of them, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it's a, it's a buck 50. I don't yeah. think many people would, would say that that's very expensive. It's, it's one of the great problems right now is that butter is way underpriced. So grass-fed yeah. butter is a very important nutrient item. You remember the economics textbooks from seventh grade? There's two things with the supply and demand. One is guns and one is butter. Okay, <laughs> And you can invest your money in guns or you can invest your money in butter. Right. Why did they pick butter for that? Because yeah. it used to be a staple food, right? <laughs> so true. <laughs> so, uh, so now it's like, all right, butter is important. This kind of bulletproof coffee thing created a national shortage of grass-fed butter earlier this I year. I love that. Which is awesome because, by the way, if you're a butter manufacturer listening to this, dude, grass-fed, there's demand. Do you hear us? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but on top of that, yeah. all right, it's still three dollars right now. You go down the street, carry gold, three bucks for a half a pound of butter, which right. is an enormous number of calories. If I was homeless on the street, yeah. you know where my first three dollars would go? Butter. Yeah, and that would feed me for three days. <laughs> yeah. my, my last trip to China, I had a really hard time finding healthy fat. There's none in the country natively, really? as far as I can find. Like everything is cooked in some kind of random oil. Yeah. So I had three sticks of Kerrygold butter. I was in China for 11 days, and I subsisted on three sticks of Kerrygold butter and a few vegetables yeah. and occasional meat, like mostly fish. And that wasn't the ideal diet by a long shot, but man, I felt a lot better than if I ate the stuff in there that would have, I know, hurt my mental performance. You don't want to do that. You want to be on your game, especially in that case. Right. I was presenting the bulletproof principles to like some very powerful business people in China to help them understand 
the impact on their own companies and their own health and their own families. When you get this right, you have an unfair advantage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. So we're almost out of time, Cool. but let's leave them with a couple of hacks that they can do right now. Ah, uh, good question. Uh, you want you me to start first this time? on this one? I'll think of a good one. All right, I'll keep it simple. Um, if you already have them, that's great. If you don't, go get some. But MCTs, next time you're hungry, perhaps in the morning, um, just have like a spoonful of them, or better yet, put them in your coffee, yeah. see how you feel, um, see what happens to your hunger, see what happens to your brain. I think you're gonna like it. So upgraded MCT oil is something I manufacture, but there's something else that's a little bit cooler. I've been looking at the difference in medium chain triglycerides, and I made brain octane oil. Brain octane is extracted from MCTs. So in order to get MCTs, the, the right ones from coconut oil, you're basically taking one sixth. So 15% of the coconut oil is the kind of MCTs that give you these, this performance. But 4% of coconut oil is the really like ultimate. <laughs> That's what's in brain octane oil. You take this stuff and it rocks your brain in a way that's different than MCTs because it's literally 18 times extracted <laughs> from coconut nuts. oil. Uh, so this has been something that has rocked my Bulletproof Coffee even more lately. And I've been sort of exploring the ratio of the different links of fatty acids, right. which is totally dorky, but I have to put a plug in there because we're talking about MCTs and yeah. that stuff is amazing. Totally, so the, um, the amount that you put in, is, does that mean it's a lot less? You, you can use a lot or? less, but you use the same amount. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just get more mental energy. Yeah. Like, I even quantified this with uh, EEG, like mental, uh, uh, look, looking at the electrical signal coming off my brain, and my numbers are, are higher. Like my wow. brain literally runs higher. It's like literally adding octane to your gas tank. It's yeah. that for your brain. I, I, it's unimaginable, and the feedback from people has been the same thing. That's cool. Yeah. What else we got? You know, thinking of another easy hack. All right. In order to tell if you're allergic to a food, and by the way, if you're listening to this, you're allergic or sensitive to at least one food if you live in the West. It is endemic. There are problems everywhere. Few people can just do anything, but many people feel like they can do anything, but there are some foods that make them weak. These are like hidden sources of kryptonite. So you used to have to go get a blood test. It was all kinds of work. There's a new iPhone app out. It's called Food Sense, and it's free. And so yeah, I'm plugging an app, but I'm not making any money on it. I just put it out there because it's so cool. Using only an iPhone, it will look at your heart rate, and then it will, based on changes in your heart rate before and after you eat, tell you if something in your meal was a hidden source of kryptonite for you. And this is part of the upcoming Bulletproof Diet book, but a free iPhone app that can replace, or at least tell you whether you have need for, a full-on laboratory blood test, which costs hundreds of dollars, is a pretty neat biohack using just cool. data off the body. Like, I'm so stoked on this, and like my consultant people are like, you have to charge for it. I'm like, no. <laughs> I want everyone on earth to know if they're allergic to food so they yeah. can stop eating foods that make them kind of cranky and bitchy and like uncomfortable. I know I'm that way. Yeah. I eat something that I'm sensitive to, like I'm not as nice. Right, yeah. oh, me too. What, so what exactly is it measuring? It's measuring the number of beats of your heart per minute. And a neurologist in the 50s actually discovered this thing. His name is Dr. Broca. And he discovered through tons and tons of quantitative analysis back when they saw stopwatches and things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no iPhones, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, anyway, he, uh, he figured out that if your heart rate goes up by 16 beats per minute, either 30, 60, or 90 minutes after you eat, there's about a 95% chance that you had something you're allergic to. So this means if you eat eggs for lunch and your heart rate goes nuts, well, either you just exercise or something, or yeah. more likely, you end up having an allergy there. So this lets you very quickly sort through a bunch of foods just by not eating them for a little while. And with a free app to do it, it's well organized. And then there you go. You have a, a list of things that might be making you weak. Mm -hmm. And then it's very simple. Eat a meal of only the things that make you weak and just watch. You just go, whoa. <laughs> like the slow motion picture of a fist hitting a face kind of thing. Like that'll happen to you. And then you know, all right, there was a hidden source of basically energy sucking stuff yeah. in my life I didn't know about. And it's profound when you find it. Dude, that's badass. I can't wait to check that out. <laughs> it's free, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again. We'll see you next time. Thanks.